Hi, I'm Fox. And I'm Raggable. And this is PSP Hacking 101. Episode 2. And today we're going to be giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get an emulator and ROMs up and running on your PSP. And we're also going to be showing you web browser tricks, despite which version of firmware you have on your PSP. Uh, for today's walkthrough, we're going to be using a Windows-based PC for all the software, but the same procedure pretty much holds the same for any Linux or Mac machine. And the first thing you're going to need to do for our tutorial today is get the emulator. And for today's episode, we are going to be using the Super Nintendo emulator called SNES 9X version 02Y31. Um, and for links to these programs or that program, check the show notes on our website for this episode. And the next thing you're going to have to go and get is an M uh, ROM. Uh, since Pox fears Nintendo, as any mortal should, we're using a public domain ROM from pdroms.com, but you can really use any ROM that you want to. <coughs> Google. Uh, are you okay, man? <coughs> BitTorrent. Okay. <laughs> okay, then you need a program you run on your PC to patch the eBoot file and install it to your memory stick. Uh, for this, we'll be using PSP Brew. Go ahead and extract that and install it to your machine. You're going to go over to the USB connection on your PSP. Go ahead and plug your uh, PSP into your PC using any Type A to Type Mini B USB cable. Uh, hopefully you should have one and it will be recognized on Windows as a mass storage device and give you the drive letter as well. Uh, remember the drive letter because you'll be using that in my computer to access it later. The next step we need to do is go ahead and extract the archive for the emulator. And there's the eBoot file that we need to patch. So we go back to PSP Brew. We're going to load that PBP. That's for converting it. We don't need to worry about that unless you have a 1.0 firmware. And then we can save the BPP. And then another option is to hide the corrupted data that comes with it. Depending on which emulator you're doing this for, it may or may not support it. Other options of note is that you can set the background image that appears when you mouse or when you scroll down to the actual program. This is the animated icon. Any background music you'd like that has to be in a certain format. Uh, the main icon for it, PNG support. Set your drive letter to the one that is your PSP, in our case, J. Save it. File saved. And then we go back to our PSP. The next step you need to do is to load ROMs into the SNES 9X folder. You have to create a ROMs folder first. And then you just take your public domain ROM. <coughs> yeah. And it supports zip, so we just throw it over there. You can also use uh, SMC or other uncompressed formats, but you'll save a lot of memory space especially, if you use uh, zipped ROMs. Especially for those that aren't fortunate enough to have a large memory stick. And there she is, and now you can play those nifty ROMs on your PSP. Then you can exit out of that after you unplug your PSP and you can go over to the game and then go down to the memory stick and there you will see your new emulator. Go ahead and launch that and you go to the ROM selection screen here and you're just going to hit the circle button on the ROM that you want to load. We'll load up our little uh, public domain ROM here. This isn't the best example of a Super Nintendo game, but this is one that anybody can get very easily. So the controls on the Super Nintendo emulator are pretty much uh, what you'd have in your hand if you were playing a real Super Nintendo. You can read the README file for the exact button mapping. But a few things to note is the left analog will bring you back the menu screen. And here you can save the state while you're playing the game. So you can turn off your PSP at any point in time and turn it back on and you can go right back to where you're playing, which is very nice because that wasn't available on the real Super Nintendo. 
Uh, the other options are frame skip. Um, notice the version number of the emulator. It's very low because they're still working on it and it's not quite there yet. So in order to get it to play at full speed, sometimes you have to skip a few frames. So it'll, it'll look a little bit jumpy, but usually you set it at one or two depending on the game and it looks pretty smooth. Um, there's also auto frame skip where it'll try and automatically adjust the frame rate based on um, how much co how complex it is and whatnot. Uh, the other thing, the screen size is is something I personally change to full. That way, it'll use the full screen of the PSP instead of just um, the little letterboxed version. You can also tell it to show frames per second, which is kind of handy if you're trying to get a game to run at full speed. Uh, V-Sync. Uh, Man, I wish I really knew what that is. Look at the Rake Me file. Uh, sound, if you're not using this sound, if you're playing in a public area and you don't have earbuds, just turn it off and you'll get better frame rate. Uh, transparency, only certain games use this. Um, Super Mario World does, but uh, Super Mario Kart doesn't. Um, clock speed. Now this is where you can, like in the first episode, you can change it up to 333 megahertz and... I play all the games this way because they run much smoother. At this point in time, you need less of a frame skip. So here we have a full screen version. You can go back, you can save your state, and of course, uh, you can go back, select a different ROM to play. This is a pretty cool little game. <laughs> Bioworm. <laughs> so now that you have your Super Nintendo emulator up and running, go out, get ROMs, have fun. And these, uh, these steps that we showed you to get the Super Nintendo emulator running pretty much hold true for the, for the Sega Genesis emulator, every emulator. <laughs> so for everybody who's got the 2.0 firmware on your PSP, there's a neat little portal that you can use in the web browser. There's a few homebrew applications you can run with this portal. Uh, they're just real simple things like a calculator, a calendar. There's also a, a few neat... Um, JavaScript games that are built into this. You can play uh, Minesweeper or Checkers. And there's also just um, some straight up links for when you're online to get your favorite uh, IM service or search engine. But U2.0 folks can't have all the fun. Uh, and for that, we have Wipeout. There's a built in web browser, and we're going to show you how to use that on PSPs running the firmware 1.50. Oh. Okay. Okay, in this segment we're going to be uh, showing you how to set up the Wi-Fi connection for your web portal. Uh, what you need to do first is go over to the left for settings, go to network settings. Uh, we're going to set it up as an infrastructure mode. Here we're going to type in portal for our web for our connection name. Scan for your SSID. There we be. Our address settings are going to be custom because what we're going to end up editing is the DNS servers. So our IP address is DHCP, DNS is manual, and for this we're going to set it to 67.171.70.72. Don't use your proxy server. It's all set up and ready to go. What you need to do next is to load up Wipeout, go down to the download section, and we're going to choose that portal connection we just created. And it's contacting that DNS server we had just set up manually and pulling up the web portal. And as for button mappings on the web browser go, uh, you move around the links with the arrow buttons. The X button selects the current link that you're on. Like I'm going to go down to PSP here, see what's new. L and R will take back and forward one page and Square will reload the current page that you're on. Hey, PSP 411. Where's, P where's PSP Hacking 101? <laughs> Contact that guy and let him know. Yay! Web browsing with the Wipeout browser in all its glory. Okay, before we sign out on Episode 2, uh, we'd like to mention the firmware update 2.0. Yeah, the firmware 2.0 has just been released in Japan earlier this month, and there's going to be a later version coming out for the U.S. later this month. 
the important thing to note is that the 2.0 release includes the security updates from 1.51 and 1.52, as mm, it also may include additional security updates. It's not official, and I don't know. So the point is, if you have 1.5, don't upgrade now Especially if you still if, want to run homebrew applications. <laughs> but if you have 1.51 and 1.52, I feel that you may as well upgrade to 2.0 just to get the new features and media support and whatever. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> uh, if I were you, I'd, I'd go out and do all the research before upgrading on the Internet, check the forums, see what people have to say, because there's some differing opinions, opinions on that. So Always a good idea. Anyways, I am Regal. And I'm Fox. And this has been Episode 2 of PSV Hacking 101.